Hey guys and welcome back to my world. Today I'm going to be looking at custom entities. Now these are entities like these that is created completely from scratch without actually hijacking any of the existing entities. So you can have all of the normal Minecraft entities plus the new ones you've created. Now be aware this is only going to be for the bedrock version of Minecraft. So this will be Windows 10, uh, MCPE, Xbox One, etc, etc. Um, I'm not going to be doing the advanced uh, behaviors of it the that I will store leave for another video uh, until we've got this custom entity out of the way and we can hook everything onto this okay so um, for custom entities you're gonna need a few things okay first of all you're gonna need a 3d model editor now I use Blockbench. you can need an image editor I use Photoshop you're gonna need a code editor visual studio and you're going to need an example pack from the Minecraft website first of all you're going to need to create the model itself now the model we will create in Blockbench, but just so that you know uh, it is under resource pack models entity and then the entity name we will deal with this a bit later in the video here we are in blockbench now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to give the file a name now this is going to be the file that is going to be uh, saved as so let's just do this flesh eating plant <laughs> okay i'm going to copy the flesh eating plant and i'm going to call this give the geometry name the same now the geometry name will come into play when we start looking at uh, having this displayed in your world. Texture width 32, texture height 32, uh, that's just to give us a bit of a texture to work with. Now it's very important to note that when you're working with custom entities, you need to create something called a bone. Now what the bone does is the point where your, your uh, model can actually bend. So if we were going to be animating this uh, model, we will be bending the uh, the, the the bones to give it an animation. Now I'm just going to fast forward through this while while I talk. Um, you'll see as I am kind of building this, I'm putting, uh, I'm, I'm giving it, a, I'm giving the bones a main heading, for example, plant, so that I can move the whole plant. Inside the plant, I'm putting the pot. Okay. Uh, also inside plant, I'm putting this, a stem, but I am then going to actually add three stems inside the stem uh, bone. So that means that each and every single stem can be be animated individually, uh, as well as the whole stem as a total can be animated. You'll see I'm doing exactly the same with the head. So I'm giving it a head. So the head will move, but I'm putting the skull and the jaw inside of the head so that the jaw can move independently from the skull but if I need to move the head I don't need to move uh, the, the skull and the jaw at the same time. You also see um, yeah I'm, I'm just kind of fiddling with it and getting it to kind of look right. Now it doesn't, at this stage it doesn't really matter what uh, the actual uh, the poses that it's doing because I will be animating this in another video. I'm not going to be animating in this video. It's important that you'll see that I quite often I actually move the rotation point. So the rotation point in block and block benches very very easily. It's just a little uh, the icon on the left top that looks like a circle uh, with a target and you can just move the rotation point of your actual um, your bone. You can move it and from that point on it will remove. It will move. Okay now I'm going to actually export it as a bedrock geometry okay now this is where we start going into you'll see into my tutorial the texture files okay so going to my tutorial texture it's under models okay where is my models there's models it's under entity and then I'm just gonna say it should save it now you'll see it's already being saved as flesh eating plant that's because when we set it up that's kind of where uh, the name then kind of comes from Okay, now you'll see that has been saved. Next, we're going to be looking at texture. Now, there's a lot going to be happening with the texture. Now, you'll see the texture pack uh, or the textures uh, is under resource pack, entity, entity, entity name.json. Now, this file, the entity name.json, is actually how we're going to be linking everything together, how we're going to add them, we're going to define the model, how the model connects to the tex texture, and how item that the spawn that gets connected. First of all, I'm going to create a new texture in Blockbench, which is incredibly nice. Uh, you can call this texture, let's just call it again, Flesh Eating Plant. Okay, the folder, I'm not too sure, we don't really need to worry about the folder right now. Make sure that we are going, we want to generate a template, so ticking the box. 
okay? Um, be sure that your resolution is set to whatever you want it to be. I, I like working with 32, it's kind of double the normal and it's, it's, it's a nice resolution to work with. When I click on confirm, you'll see that I have various other options for my template. Most of the time, unless you exactly know what you're doing, don't worry about it. You can leave it all to default except your resolution. Now you'll see that Blockbench has actually created a lovely little texture schematic for you that you can now just go in uh, and color in. Now you'll see that I'm going to be painting uh, directly in Blockbench, which is pretty nice. It gives me a good base for when I do want to take it into another graphics program uh, to know where what is. So I'm just going to give this a very, very, very quick quick paint. I'm not going to be too specific about it, but you'll see that I, you know it, it takes a bit of trickery every now and again. Some of the things don't work as well and you need to kind of move your elements to new parts of the UV. As you can see right there, I just kind of colored in the new part. So it really just comes down to, to fiddling with it and um, making yeah, just making sure everything fits, everything has a color, everything is ready, re ready. You do not have to be perfect with this. I mean, I was maybe a bit too trying to be too perfect with this. Um, I'm still not quite happy with how this turned out, the coloring. Uh, and I'll just go over in faded Photoshop. I'll kind of, kind of just be a bit more uh, better with this. But I do, I do love. As you can see, it's already got a bit of a nice little character on it. Uh, character on it. At this stage, I decided that I want teeth. Okay, so at this stage, I kind of uh, added the teeth. Uh, to the model itself so that it's kind of just yeah you know it just looks a little bit more a little bit more freaky and that was it that was where I uh, the, it was so then I just saved it and you'll see it automatically kind of saved it uh, where I needed to be under textures under my uh, this time I'm going to save it under tutorials and under entities and you'll see it's already got the flesh eating plant and that's it now we've got our model okay and we have our tech texture Okay, now we just need to go and do a bit of the coding part of it. Okay, now this is where we are going to be defining uh, where everything is. So first off, this is the actual physical code of your uh, your your model. Now you'll see there geometry dot flesh eating plant. I'm just going to copy that because we're going to need that to specify uh, it in the follow in the following file. So we are going to go up to models. Uh, sorry, we're going to go to uh, tutorials. We are going to go to to entity. And then you'll see I already have a template. So I just w w work from a template and then I just create, uh, just fill it out to be the, the normal ones. Now you'll see everything where it says template, you just need to replace. Now you'll see that I've got there under geometry. Okay, I'm adding geometry dot flesh eating plant. Now this is connects um, my entity. So this is the identifier. So you'll see it, I, I tend to use D, DZ as Dragnos, DZ colon, and then um, whatever it is that I'm creating. So this is now the, my identifier is DZ flesh eating plant. Now this is how inside of Minecraft you are going to be able to summon it is by using summon DZ colon flesh eating plant, for example. Then you'll see the texture. Now I'm going to connect my texture to uh, my identifier. And then I'm going to connect my geometry to uh, my identifier. So identifier that I'm highlighting there now connects to everything. Now materials, I'll be honest, I'm not 100% sure how I how we can leverage that, but I tend to leave it at spider. Spider was the first thing that I was filling with and it worked for me, so I'm kind of leaving it uh, where it is. Uh, and then, right, now the most important one, the render controller, uh, don't have to worry about the render controller right now because I'm not going to be, we not in this particular video, we're not going to be doing animations. What we do want to do is we want to create a specific spawn egg for it. Now you'll see a spawn egg, the texture is going to be flesh eating plant and the texture index is zero. Now I'll explain that when we get, when we get to that part. Okay, so that was entity. Now uh, we are going to go so that the models, the models is where, where that is. And then we're going to go to the item texture. Uh, and code. So now that we've got the connected up the the, the model uh, to the texture we, and the item, we now need, just need to do the item. So in the resource pack, all right, uh, we've got textures, items, custom, okay, and entity item name. So this is the PNG. This is the picture of the actual uh, icon that we're going to be using as our spawn egg. Under textures as well, you've got something called item, item textures .json. This is a very important uh, file as well. This is where the uh, where we list every single item texture that we add, just that Minecraft can reference it. And then last but not least, you'll see we've got resource packs, text, and US 
uh, English US dot language. This is your language file. So unless you want your model to be DZ underscore model underscore blah 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 blah, uh, you need to update your language file. We'll, we, we're we're going to do that right now. Right. So first off, um, you can see here I've opened up uh, Photoshop. I am just very 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 quickly going to draw uh, a icon for my plant. So you know it's not it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, it just kind of needs to give you an idea of what the plant looks like. Also, you don't really need it. You can leave it as a spawn egg if you really wanted to. But I, I, I tend to kind of like having uh, just little icons that just shows me exactly what it is that uh, I'm, I'm looking for. Instead of remembering, oh, it's a purple egg with green and yellow spots is the plant. I now just have a little plant. Okay, and it helps when you're making maps. So very, very, very important. You need to save this as a PNG 24 with uh, transparency. Okay, uh, it gets saved under items, as you remember, uh, under uh, textures, items. And now I've got a new folder here called uh, DZ. So, so tutorial textures, items, and there we go. And then we just save it as, uh, we're gonna save it as flesh eating plant underscore egg. All right. So now we have defined the texture, or we've now have created the texture for uh, our, our flesh-eating plant. Next thing we need to do is that we now need to connect uh, Tell Minecraft where the texture is. So under item texture, you'll see once again this is all set to default again. So under temp the template is the actual file that I referenced in my entity so there we go you'll see this is this uh this texture uh, over there see texture fl flesh eating plant that's the one that i'm going to be referencing over there uh and then i'm going to change that to flesh eating plant uh egg okay now you'll see there's two two textures there the bottom one i'm going to leave it there just so to explain to you what's going on but if we go back here all right you'll see that we've got the texture index zero all right that is the first line Right, so if I were to set that to texture zero one, uh, index one, it'll use the next one. So it's zero, one, two, three, four. This is how, um, like, a single entity that has multiple skins, for example, uh, or mo multiple items uh, works is by using the index. So um, it, same with blocks. For example, when you have a block and it's uh, stone, you've got like six different textures for stone, uh, and this is the index uses that textures. The next thing we need to do is go under texts. Now we need to change the language. Now, this is very, very important. Um, I'm only updating my US uh, English, English US file for now, but you need to update this for every single language that you want your, 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 um, uh, your thing to be in. Now, very important, as you see, uh, we need to put in there entity.dz fle DZ flesh eating plant dot name. Okay, it, the name of it is going to be flesh eating plant. Okay, so that's the entity, DZ ne entity. Next, we are going to do item dot spawn egg dot entity dot DZ flesh eating plant dot name. Okay, this is all kind of like Java-ish um, ways of, of writing code, and we'll we'll get into that as well in f future um, tutorials. Okay, so I'm going to add the brain, so it's under behavior packs. Now there's two things we're going to need to add. Okay, we're going to add the entity name .json. Okay, uh, and then we need loot tables for that entity. Now you'll see, unfortunately, I made a boo boo there by saying PNG, but it's actually .json. So first off, if we go into behavior packs, we go into entities, and you'll see once again, I have a bog standard template here. Now very important, the identifier is exactly the same one that I referenced in um, the material file. Okay, oops, and I cut that, I shouldn't have cut that. So that is DZ uh, flesh eating plot. Okay, um, now you'll see that this is, uh, format 1.10 you'll see that it's spawnable it's summon summonable it's experimental is false it's very very important that it's false okay because otherwise it's locked behind the experimental toggle uh, you'll see that uh, for example I'm gonna set the family here to enemies okay the family is, is doesn't really matter a lot because we will reference it later in the code when we do those tutorials but you can have multiple uh, multiple families and things like that um, the loot table as well, we're going to just add the loot table so that when we do kill the plant, something actually does drop from it. Uh, as I said, this that you've got here is the most basic uh, 
uh, behavior file. It doesn't. There's actually no real behaviors there except that it won't die instantaneously and uh, it'll stay on the ground and, and so forth. It's just basic. We will build on this as we go along in the future. Okay, we will build on this. So uh, this will it's just so that we have an entity we can chuck out there and and go for it. We're now going to add the loot table. Now the loot table just allows us to when you kill the entity to actually drop. A specific loot now this can get very very uh, involved uh, and quite advanced as well and once again in future episodes we will go through this a bit more in depth but all you need to know is that you can get multiple rolls so you can roll once so you can have and have a pool of items so if I roll once you have a pool of items that has a weight to it um, and uh, higher the weight the more probable it is that it will actually drop okay uh, and for example if i have three items in one pool i can say this the first item uh, has a higher probability to drop than the second item than the third item than the fourth item etc and then i have can have multiple roles so the first roll rolls uh, a important item this uh, a valuable item the second roll a cheap item etc uh, etc et okay i think we are ready to now that we saved it to go and check this out in the world okay We've now connected everything up. Uh, the entity is fully formed. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our inventory. We're going to go to uh, eggs and you can see, ah, there we go. Right there. Flesh eating plant egg. Isn't that awesome? And then if we click on it, you'll see ta -da, there is our plant. OK, isn't that absolutely awesome? I love it. Ah, OK, so you'll see the tongue is a bit but weird that happens when uh, it's not re it, uh, it's uh, it's when the the pixels you've created is not big enough to have texture on it all right so this really is um, it's for custom entity so we've completely and utterly started custom entity from scratch okay uh, now we will deal with animation and we will deal with commands in a later video just so that we have a bit of a recap uh, the following files is what you will need to change uh, when creating custom entities first is your model file okay you've got your skin, skin graphic you've got your skin code you've got your entity item or your spawn egg you've got your language files you've got your entity behavior and you've got your entity loot so that's resource pack entity entity name models entity entity name Textures, items, custom entity, uh, textures, item, texture.json, textures, entity, custom entity name, PNG, and then textures, item, texture, JSON, and we've got text underscore or US language. And then on our behavior side, we only have two, which is entities, entity name.json, and loot stable is entities, custom, and then I made a mistake with the JPG, but it's entity.json. Cool guys, I am going to be doing uh, a few more of these videos and build up on this plant until we have a fully animated working uh, kind of a bossish mobbish kind of a thing with this plant. So yeah, if you do like this, do give me a give me a thumb. I mean, I hate asking for that, but yeah, if you like it, share this. There's not a lot of stuff out there. Um, and yeah, as always, I hope to see you all later.